All right, welcome to the uh, Delanca Township Committee meeting for December 21st, 2020. This is via Zoom remote access to uh, normally be held at the Municipal Building, 770 Coopertown Road in Delanco, New Jersey. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Brown? Here. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Ms. Fitzpatrick? Here. here. Sorry. Ms. Holland? I'm here. Okay. Here. Mr. Olet? Here. And Mr. Templeton? Uh, here. And also present, Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator. Uh, let's see, Mrs. Lohr, Municipal Clerk. Mrs. Martin, Deputy Municipal Clerk. Uh, I didn't see Mr. Fenimore on. We have uh, Chief De DeSanto. Uh, let's see, we have Aaron Provenzano, our technical consultant. And anyone that I miss, I don't see. I think I got everybody. We'll pass on the flag salute tonight for the um, sunshine statement, please, Mrs. Ward. Please be advised that proper notice of this meeting has been given in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act in the following manner. <clears throat> Written notice has been mailed to the Burlington County Times and Courier Post, published in the December 27th. 2019 editions and written notice has been posted on the official bulletin board of the township of Delanco at least 48 hours prior to the meeting. Remote access meeting option notice. Um, please take notice that um, in order of the Impugnings Act and in consideration of executive orders uh, 103, 104, and 107 issued by Governor Murphy declaring a state of emergency, the township of Delanco does hereby notify the public that to protect the health, safety, and welfare of our citizens while ensuring the continued functioning of government, the meeting of the Delanco Township Committee scheduled for December 21st, 2020 is available via electronic format for members of the public who wish to participate in the meeting remotely. The public may participate via remote access as follows. Um, it is uh, via the Zoom platform. The login credentials are available on the uh, agenda and on the front window, as well as the bulletin board, the meeting ID, the passcode, as well as telephone numbers that uh, you may choose. We have a remote public meeting statement, advanced public comments. Advanced public comments will be accepted via written letter or electronic mail. All advanced comments must be received no later than six hours prior to the commencement of the published public meeting start time. All advanced public comments must be submitted to the municipal clerk's email at jlord.delancotownship.com or the municipal clerk's attention at 770 Coopertown Road, Delanco, New Jersey. Public comments submitted before the remote public meeting deadline will be read aloud during the remote public meeting. Um, members of the public who wish to make comments or have questions during the meeting public comment sessions may either make their comments or questions via audio option by unmuting or by typing in their uh, comment or question via the Zoom platform chat option. Um, other comments or questions submitted via the chat function at any other time during the meeting may or may not be read during the meeting. Members of the public who are deemed to be disruptive as defined by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 may be muted after an initial warning for the duration of the public comment session and or remainder, remainder of the remote meeting session. The agenda for this remote meeting is available on the Delanco Township website, um, delancotownship.com under agendas. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor. Very good, thank you. Um, just an overview of tonight. Obviously, we got the, uh, you know, what potentially could be a normal meeting, but we've got a couple items that may uh, uh, draw some additional comments and additional co conversation, discussion. Uh, we've got several discussion items at the end. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, the committee and, and any public uh, commentary during that, that uh, uh, we kind of devote our attention to things that we can resolve for this year as this is the last meeting of this uh, calendar year. And if there are uh, items that we can uh, maybe defer to uh, the beginning of next year and the new, uh, Township Committee season that we do do that and concentrate our um, brain power on what we need to solve tonight and uh, to close out this year. So uh, first item, ordinance 2020-15, authorizing acquisition of property at block 2300, lot one, formerly uh, also known as One Hawk Island within the Township of Delanco, is the second reading by title only and public hearing. Uh, the hearing is now open to the public on ordinance 2020-15. If there's anyone in the public that has a comment on this or 
question, uh, please state your name, address, and uh, raise your hand electronically uh, or on video, and we'll. Sure, uh, I'm uh, Stephen McLaughlin right here. Yes, sir. Um, 740 Rank Cocos Avenue. Um, so I'm I'm assuming that this ordinance will pass, and and so I just had some com comments about Hawk Island looking to the future. I hope uh, uh, it's not too uh, too much of a too much outside the scope of what you want for this meeting. But um, I just want to make the point that for me, the front and center issue with Hawk Island should be uh, preserving what we have, really preserving the peninsula in its current state as a haven for plants and wildlife. Um, and so whatever the future plans end up being, I would like to see them be as minimal as possible. Um, I just want to make one point, which is that the litter back there is an issue, um, but it doesn't require making a park to address the litter. Um, I think it, the baseline option should be at least be there that we could clean up the litter and uh, leave it untouched. Um, <laughs> doing nothing is an option. <laughs> um, if you, the township committee is going to pursue the idea of turning it into a park, um, I think the people of Delanco need some clarity on um, what the plan is, basically what the what the legal process will entail, um, and how long it will take, and how how long it will cost. Um, because I think that the, the state riparian map still covers you know, a big part of the, the, the current state property. Um, so that would have to be recategorized. I can imagine that the, we may need eagle studies. Uh, there's lots of endangered animals back there. Herons, there's skunks and foxes. There's all kinds of wildlife back there that basically I'm imagining a lot of legal red tape and um, possibly you know, expensive specialized environmental lawyers. Mm -hmm. So if the plan goes forward, I hope we get some clarity on that. Um, and if it does become a park, we should, I would hope that you would discuss options for limiting access. Maybe uh, if it stays a locally owned park, we could limit access to Delanco residents. That's a possibility. Some towns around here have done that. If it becomes green acres, maybe we can limit it to two Saturdays a week or two, two Saturdays a month, something like that. Um, and make, uh, have some common sense limits to preserve wildlife, such as you know, not permitting dogs back there. Um, and just want to make one final point about, you know, the kind of the near-term future of Hawk Island, um, which is that once the township has acquired that property, I don't really see, I, I would hate to see more sort of aggressive policing and, and you know, maybe more video surveillance back there in the short term, um, because there are, I mean, it's not a huge secret. There are some people in Delenco who use Hawk Island in a benign way. Mm -hmm. I would hate to do some everyday residents, you know, especially kids, teenagers, um, getting caught up in being prosecuted for, for trespassing back there. Um, so I'd hope that that would not be a priority for the police. Um, so that will that'll do it for my comments. In short, I'm really hoping that you, the Township Committee will leave Hawk Island alone as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you for your thoughts. Appreciate that. Anyone, uh, any other comments on this? Mayor, um, the public is reminded the meeting is open to the public for Ordinance 2020-15. Anyone may wishing to make a comment um, via audio must unmute themselves uh, and uh, state their name and address. Also, there, there's the chat function, which if um, anyone would like to type in their uh, comment or question, this is the time to do that for ordinance 2020-15. And when you're done with taking that, we do have three emails that I received one for this ordinance that um, they are required to be entered into the record during this hearing. And whoever has their audio, can you please mute that so we... Uh -huh. I need to comment Mark, on Hawk Island on this ordinance, 2020-15, please. And uh, the letters that you received, Mrs. Lohr, uh, can you just give the, the names of the- Sure, the sure. Um, and we have, the first letter is from Phil McFadden, who is the uh, chair of the Delenco Recreation Commission uh, regarding the ordinance to acquire uh, lot one on Hawk Island. Dear mayor and committee members, uh, submit, I submit this letter to express my support of the Township Committee's plan to acquire the parcels uh, of property on Hawk Island in Delanco over the past several decades. And uh, the, the, this 
law with the remote requires that I pretty much read them. Um, so I, I can't just oh. say who it's from and I do have to read them I under this. Um, over the past several decades, efforts have been made to preserve this property, maintain its natural <laughs> beauty. Uh, however, most of the property is owned by private and state entities. This has limited the township's control and management of the property. Township ownership of the parcels will allow local residents more sight over the use of Hawk Island and the conservation of its natural habitat. Township ownership and control allows for the destiny of these lands to be determined by local population and not in Trenton or elsewhere. Like with the close calls the township had with the Zerberg Mansion, West Avenue Nature Trails, Gateway Park, Field of Dreams, to name just a few examples. Township ownership and careful, thoughtful stewardship of, of these parcels is the best vehicle to preserve the valuable natural resources that Hawk, Hawk Island provides. Thank you for being a proactive committee to address the problem for our, uh, of our communities, dwindling natural and open spaces. Sincerely, Phil, Philip L. McFadden, Chairman, Delanca Recreation Commission. We have a email letter from, and the type <laughs> printed out very tiny, from Alyssa De La Pena of 227. Center Avenue. I wait, I'm writing to express my opinions to the township on the township acquisition of an, an additional section of Hawk Island. I've been a resident for 28 years and plan to live in Delanca for the rest of my life. I have seen our beautiful farmland and open space taken away and turned into unsightly developments, factories, or warehouses. With that, many animals have been displaced, trees taken down, and native plant life destroyed. I understand that the town has certain low income housing requirements they need to fill, which is mandated by the state. And that may have been the reason for some of those housing developments. With the acquisition of a new piece of Hawk Island, I am concerned for the island's future. It now remains one of the last untouched pieces of Delanco, a refuge for many animals who have lived there for years or have relocated there from prior displacement. It is a dense wooded area with many older trees and native plants. I have heard rumors that there may be discussion of turning the land into a park, putting in parking lots and paved trails. I do not know this to be factual, but as a Resident, resident, those rumors concern me. Creating a park will ultimately destroy destroy the wildlife that inhabits Hawk Island. It will leave a permanent footprint on the on the land. I also want to make note that I am aware of the immense trash buildup on Hawk Island from boaters as well as all as washing in with the tide. I feel as though the trash and the park are separate issues. Regardless um, of the ultimate decision on what to do with the land, the township and its residents have a responsibility to clean it up. I see Hawk Island cleaned up and left as is. I am afraid that this land will someday be used to fill state mandated low income housing requirements. What is the township's plan with the land? And what can the township do with the land without ever owning half of the 120 acres? If the township wants to implement a park to protect the land from possible low income housing use, I am in favor. If the township wishes to apply for green acres or other land preservation grant, I'm also in favor. If the township wishes to implement a park, and that is the ultimate decision. Please take my plea into consideration. Make the part, park as least impactful as possible. Leave the trails alone, as many are already established. Don't put in a parking lot, which will attract many out of towners to the area disturbing the wildlife. Don't put in permanent fixtures, such as restrooms that require sewer. Delanco is a beautiful place. And with the increasing use of our open space for new development and warehouses, I fear we are joining in with the rest of the world, taking a small, wonderful, is taking the small town charm out of Delanco. I've explored West Avenue dunes many times and think that Delanco did a wonderful job with establishing that, it, that as trails to protect it from dredging. The minimal impact design of the West Avenue trails would be my hope for Hawk Island if the land simply cannot be left untouched. My hope is the township can band together and listen to the community to save Hawk Island. Delanco is a timeless treasure on the Delaware. Our open space needs to be protected. With the acquisition of this land, I hope the township figures out a way to clean it up and finds a way to open up, open it up to the community to enjoy, as well as preserve the wildlife that resides there. Take down the no trespassing signs and make the punishment for littering, littering stronger to discourage it from happening. With or without no trespassing signs, the littering, littering will still occur. The dog walkers and nature lovers are not the issue. Let them enjoy the land, but please don't make Hawk Island a park, which will attract more than just the residents. I'm in favor of the township acquiring this land as it allows us to have a way, have a say in what comes of it. Thank you for taking the time to read my letter. Sincerely, Alyssa De La Pena. And the third letter is from Elizabeth Mattisat, 737 Franklin Street. Um, I just want to weigh in on the acquisition of the additional parcel, parcel out on Hawk Island. 
assuming that the land will be preserved as open space, I am all for it. It would be nice if someday the township cobbles together the ownership of the entire peninsula and create a bona fide park with walking trails. Best regards, Elizabeth Mattisette. Thank you, Mayor. Are there any other comments from the public regarding this? I see no chats. All right, very comments good. or questions? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Excuse oh, me? We do have someone. Okay, yeah, this is Phil Jenkins, 415 Third Street. Yes. Okay, uh, Mayor, you did a wonderful job with the dunes getting that, you know, set up for the nature trails and all. Now, I think that was a wonderful thing to do. It's tremendous. I've been in town a long time and I've been back Hawk Island many a time. And right now there's no trespassing on Hawk Island. I'd love to see it to be open to the public to be able to walk back there as walking trails. What concerns me is the Army Corps of Engineers has three places for dredge spoils. Uh, the, the dunes hawk island and palmyra cove i don't think if they're going to be putting dredge spoils anywhere they'd be putting it at the dunes or at you know palmyra cove i think the place that they would be putting at would be hawk island if we could turn that into some sort of recreation area then maybe they wouldn't put it there which would make everyone happy um as for the trash that's out there uh the marina, some of the people at the marina have had a problem and they've even cleaned up some of the trash that's been out there. It's been excessive. And I know residents that live on both Walter Avenue and Vine Street have a lot of problems in the summertime with people who park their cars in the streets and go back to Hawk Island. I think it would be great if we, the public, could use it again, but keep it minimal, you know, just for there's already trails back there, just keep it as what's going on. And I can, whoever was the one that got the uh, ball rolling congratulations i think that's a great thing to do and i'm very happy for all of you all right thank you any other comments on this uh, at this point the hearing is now closed to the public uh, township committee members any comments uh, regarding this ordinance um this is kate i would i have a couple comments i'd like to make um it's always, you know, I grew up in Delanco and um, we used to have a great time out there on Hawk Island playing cowboys and Indians and whatever, but I would like to see it preserved in its natural state as well. However, I think it would be nice if the Delanco residents could um, actually go back there, take the fence down, no parking lot, but at least allow us to utilize it somewhat for walking. I don't believe people should be walking their dogs back there because that would intimidate the uh, wildlife. And um, like other residents in town, I certainly enjoyed, enjoy the wildlife. Living on the Rancocas Creek, I have the opportunity to see a lot of it and it uh, makes my day. So um, I'm in favor of this acquisition because the more property we own back there, the better for the residents of Delanco. Um, that's how I feel. Thank you. Thank you. Any other committee members, comments? Yeah. This is Fern Olet. Go ahead, Christine. No, no, I'll go after you. Don't worry. Uh, I'm in favor of us acquiring or uh, getting as much control of Hawk Island as we can. Uh, this way here, we control the destiny of the property, or at least have more control of its destiny. And uh, being able to preserve it for wildlife and keeping it in its natural uh, form uh, and minimizing public access, uh, I think would be a, a tremendous uh, benefit. Uh, other folks have made the comment of uh, wildlife and we people uh, just continually uh, taking that land and building upon it uh, pushing them, uh, well, almost to the point of extinction uh, for the wildlife. So I'm in favor of uh, the direction uh, we seem to be going with this uh, project. Thank you. Ms. Holland? Yeah, uh, I, I can't say much more than that other than um, we all know about the trash back there, but if we're all trespassing when we're there, we don't have the benefit of 
asking for law enforcement or, um, or organizing a cleanup because we just don't own enough of it. If we have public access to it, there's at least uh, the fear of being caught um, for the narrow dwells. Um, and, and those of us that are fierce uh, environmentalists would be able to uh, be empowered to, to do something about it. So I just, I think that we're heading in the right direction and, and the, the comments about park access and, and developing that, that's still so far in the future. We only have a small segment of the peninsula. So I just, this is a step in the right direction and, and I'm, I'm enthusiastic and hopeful because I didn't grow up here. I didn't get to see you know, everyone frolicking around back there, but I bought my house right at Hawk Island. It's my backyard. And, you know, it's frustrating when I, I drive over to Amico and it's beautiful and everyone is, you know, just walking around, loving life. And I have to get in my car when I have this right behind me. But, you know, I, I certainly don't want to, want to be caught doing the wrong thing, trespassing. So, um, so there we are. I, I am definitely in favor of public access. Mr. Brown? Just to comment, uh, to piggyback on everybody else, um, I just want to add that uh, when I got involved 20 years ago with uh, public life, the, the whole buzzword was uh, preserve Hulk Island, stop the dread spoils, stop the dredging. Uh, there was a big, big uh, movement against that. Now we finally are in control of our destiny uh, to do something. And I'm very surprised I'm hearing these comments about Towney Park and uh, policing. What? This stops potential dredge spoils from that being used. And, uh, you know, the only way to really get a grip on the, the trash is to make it our park. Okay. So uh, I just, I want to tell the people that are chiming in on this, we're way far away. It has taken 40 years to get to this point and it's going to take many committees to really work on this, uh, possibly by the other parcels and uh, then come up with a plan and then funding. So we're, we're very, I'll probably be dead by the time you're allowed to walk back there. So I don't think, I don't think everybody should get upset over it. Just let's work together and make it happen before the state uses it. Very That's good. all I have. Right. I think all the, a lot of the bases have been covered. Uh, this parcel and the one we acquired back in the springtime, it, it, it was a piece of very good luck that uh, a lot of people have been working towards, as John said, for the past uh, 25 or 30 years or so. Um, uh, we had uh, uh, the estate of one property and uh, through some good uh, uh, detective work by Chief DeSanto, we were able to locate the, the heir uh, and last, uh, uh, the heir to uh, a former owner of uh, the parcel we're acquiring tonight. And we're able to establish contact there uh, and uh, get to this point tonight to acquire it. Um, as John said, we're a long way from any kind of final uh, disposition as to what, the, uh, what it would be. Hopefully it'll be some kind of preserved open space uh, in one form or another. Uh, the key thing is, as has been mentioned is uh, uh, trying to make this as unpalatable to uh, the DEP and the Corps of Engineers as a potential future dredge site um, and acquiring the properties that we've, uh, by good luck, uh, through last spring and tonight, uh, we've been able to acquire. Uh, we hope that there will, there will be significant impediments uh, to that occurring. So uh, it's, this is one step in a long uh, chain of uh, a lot of work by a lot of people over at least two decades. So anyway, um, thank you for all the comments uh, from the committee and the public. Um, may I have a motion please on ordinance 2020-15? Uh, so moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Olet. The second was Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Thank you. Roll call please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Mrs. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. And Mr. Templeton. Yes. And uh, thanks to uh, our solicitor, Mr. Heinhold, uh, for some very uh, 
some persistence uh, with some difficult negotiations on this. So uh, appreciation all around and the Chief DeSanto for uh, uh, getting the golden nugget here. So thank you. Ordinance 2020-16, amending the Township Code at uh, Chapter 29, governing to, governing to rename Historic Preservation Advisory Board to History Board. This is a second reading by title only, public hearing. Hearing is now open to the public on Ordinance 2020-16. Any comments or questions from the public on this ordinance, renaming okay. the Historic Preservation Advisory Board? Again, the public is reminded at this time for ordinance, a uh, public hearing on ordinance 2020-16 to please unmute if you wish to make a comment or to type your uh, comment or questions in the chat section. This is for ordinance 2020-16. And there was a, any correspondence on this, Mrs. Lohr? Not for this particular hearing. Um, there was previous correspondence okay. uh, for previous meetings. All right but uh, not specific to the public hearing for this ordinance. Uh, hearing no comments on this ordinance. Uh, hearing is now closed to the public. Motion for ordinance 2020-16. So moved. Second. By Ms. Fitzpatrick, second please. Second. Yeah. Ms. Uh, Ms. Holland was second. All right. Roll call please. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Patrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Olette? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. And I want one of those hats with the shortened name on it. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, uh, let's see. Just want to make sure I got the right pages on the uh, revised agenda. Public comment statement purpose of the public comment sessions is to allow is to allow residents to share information and or views with the Delanco Township Committee. Since the committee may be hearing the information for the first time, it is not always possible to have issues and questions settled within the public comment session. And there's a report of advanced remote meeting comments slash questions. This section is to acknowledge and, and read those comments and questions received by the municipal clerk in advance of the remote meeting, either by electronic email or written letter as required by NJAC 5 colon 39-1 at Sequeter. Uh, members of the public participating live in this meeting will be given the opportunity for comments and questions during the meeting in one or both of the public comment sessions. Uh, the meeting open to the public for comments and questions, session one. And, yes. and Mayor, Mayor, for the record, um, I had no additional advanced remote meeting comments or questions submitted uh, to my office. Uh, the only were. Uh, were the three that were specific to ordinance 15. Okay, very good. Any comments from anyone in, a, in attendance uh, remotely for session one? Hearing and seeing none, uh, comment question section of the meeting is now closed to the public. Comments and reports, uh, Township Administrator, Mr. Schwab. Mute. Is he muted? There we go. Figured out how to do it, thank you. Um, most important thing I have on here is the uh, road program. If you remember at the last meeting, uh, Harry Fox reported that we'd gotten the uh, 2021 NJDOT grant. And it was the question of what streets to do from that grant. I had asked them about putting together their professional services agreement so they can work on the, the uh, specs and uh, get it out to bids. One of the things he and I talked about prior to this meeting is that it makes sense to combine, as we did in 2020, the state grant money with our local funds and go out to bids as a group. We get a better price, move things along more quickly. So, and then of course their costs, the engineering costs are lower because they're doing it all one shot. Uh, the issue is timing. We would like to get the work done by the engineer in February, get out to bids in March, for example, and get the work done in April and May. That's actually when the contractor that we uh, contracted with in November is actually gonna do the 2020 program. If we can put it all together, we can save a lot of money. So the 
rather than have you approve the engineer's proposal at this meeting, uh, I'd like to convince you to pre-commit as it were and include in our temporary budget in January, uh, the $200,000 that we would put in capital for the annual road program. Uh, we would name those streets at that point and then authorize the engineer to do it all uh, at that point. We may not adopt our budget till late April or May. So the alternative is to wait and hold the state money as we did last year until you've adopted the budget, adopted the capital ordinance, and then they do the work and we're out to bids in August or September for all of it again, versus if we move now, move in January and February, we can get this work done sooner. And uh, so the key thing is whether there's a concern for pre-committing those dollars. So I'm not asking for a, a, a decision now, but I'm putting that in your mind and explaining why we don't have a proposal from the engineer. I told them to hold off and I'll be sending you guys some information and emails so that you can make that decision in January. Okay, does anyone have any questions or comments, frankly, while I'm here as to whether or not that's the stupidest idea you ever heard or whether or not you think we're heading the right direction. And I think Christine's dog might have some comments for us later. Richard, I think that's a good so, idea. I, I, I would agree with you on that. Okay, thank you. I agree also. This way here we can take a look at the dollars and uh, have an idea again, saving dollar, saving dollars in the long run. So I think it's a good idea. Yeah, it it does reduce your. I see a thumbs up by John Brown. It does reduce your flexibility when you're making budget decisions. You can't cut that out of the program because you have already adopted a temporary budget with it in there, and so therefore you have to include it in your final budget in May. So. I'll be showing you some numbers in January and hopefully you'll be comfortable with uh, doing that and we'll head in that direction. Thank you. Great. Uh, the other little stuff, uh, hopefully uh, we got word that our new copier is uh, ready to be delivered. So if it's not this week, it'll be next week when we can get the installers here. And then uh, yeah. I hope you all got your, um, the information on the budget transfer resolution and the GIF insurance resolution. If anyone has got still got problems or questions with that before you adopt it in the consent agenda don't hesitate to let me know that's all i have does anyone have any questions uh, mr schwab on those two items that he just mentioned right now i'm good thank right. you i'm good all right, all right. That's, that's it. all right thank you so much uh department heads uh, mrs war for administration Nothing at this time, Mayor. Um, my work is actually later in the meeting with the calendar and uh, executive session. Thank you. I think all our work's later in the meeting. <laughs> uh, public Works, is Mr. Fenimore on? I think he's sleeping uh, after the week he's had with the snow. And I talked with John uh, this afternoon and it was a heroic piece of work Wednesday night uh, with the plowing and the, the snow and the rain and the sleet and everything else. So it uh, uh, did a good job and with a minimum crew and some good vehicles that we, uh, we've we acquired over the last two, two three years. So um, streets look good. Uh, Chief DeSanto, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me circle back. Back first, just so the public is aware of what the police position was and what we were trying to accomplish with the uh, Hawk Island. Uh, we were trying to address the issue with the littering and we came to find that most of the littering was actually occurring in private property. So the whole uh, occurrence of contacting the previous owner was try to get a cooperation where he would post uh, no trespassing and and give us written authorization to uh, enforce trespassers and littering. And in the turn, uh, he was unaware of his uh, inheritance and, and that started the talks. But the police position's always been trying to uh, maintain, keeping, uh, eliminating the nuisance out in Hawk Island. Uh, I mean, I'll be 
quite blunt and we've been turning a blind eye to the residents. But when we have issues, we try to address them, but there's many barriers. And one of which, which you know, is finally being addressed is the actual ownership and enforcement of jurisdiction. Uh, the other you know, barrier, which you know, we eventually will have to address is access. It's very difficult for us to get back there. Uh, it's not you know, taking a quick ride through there and uh, checking that nothing's going on. Uh, it's very easily get stuck back there. And if that occurs, then you're tying up an officer probably for 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Um, but with this acquisition, what we can start doing is pinpoint enforcement of the uh, shore area with the in conjunction with the state marine police. That's that's the goal uh, to start with that type of enforcement and um, and try to limit access until we get things under control and and the long term plan. I'm sure township committee will come up with one. But I just wanted to give a brief of what the goal was at the police department and what we're trying to accomplish. Um, as uh, I submitted. Uh, it's not just isolated to the Lanco Township. I made the committee aware. I reached out the superintendent of the Brunton County Parks, and they're also experiencing some issues at their park parkland. So, um, you know, it, as Mr. Uh, Templeton, the mayor has said numerous times, it seems to be a mindset of people, not necessarily where you live. It's uh, I think it's just a general mindset of people just being inconsiderate, uh, just put it bluntly. The, uh, the next item is, if you recall, there was a uh, request by Mr. DeLeo, I forget his title, but with RLS, his request is about Enterprise Drive and the parking of uh, trailers on there. So his request was initially looking to um, us to post no parking uh, certain times of the day on the area, which is public right away, which is approximately 800 and 43 feet from the top of my head. I believe that's what it was. Um, we we uh, decided to uh, suggestion of Mr. Schwab, Township Administrator, to get a meeting and find out what the root cause and try to address the problem and make sure that our solution to the problem wasn't going to cause another problem down, down the road. So um, we uh, met on December 10th, myself and the Township Engineer. We met with representatives of Misfits Market, RLS, um, NVR, and uh, we all uh, spoke, and uh, and it was one of the fastest and easiest meetings I ever had. I think they all understood the issue that RLS was having, and they all came with a verbal compromise, and with the understanding that the uh, township engineer is going to submit a um, a location or exact uh, plot point uh, where we're going to make new parking on both sides of the, the township right away uh, to a to a certain location that we all agreed upon would be, uh, I guess, reasonable and, and not affect operations. So that um, that's to come from uh, Mr. Fox. But uh, and but in the meantime, they all agreed, uh, both uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that they would adhere to the you know the no parking area, and um, so they all walked away in agreement. So I think uh, it, it went smoothly, and I haven't had any contacts. Uh, complaining about the result. And I think the big thing is we had everybody there together once and no one could come back later and say they weren't, you know, part of the meeting. So, um, and we kind of find out the NVR was the uh, RLS thought, the thought that it was misfits, but it was, turns to be our uh, NVR was having the most trailers in the area that they were concerned about. So as soon as we brought NVR to the meeting, they, they were very, uh, um, you know, uh, willing to work with us and congenial and, and uh, it went smoothly. Uh, the only other item I have is uh, the COPS care program and uh, we called it the first responders care program this year. Uh, Delanco EMS got involved and so you know between us and uh, Delanco EMS we were able to help two families, a total of four children and uh, if you noticed on our Facebook page uh, there's deliveries of those gifts uh, which Santa helped us get uh, were delivered uh, and it, to the school in order to get them to the children. But Santa was, uh, you know, he's not going to be able to get to every house. So he's asking for some help and we're helping him out. So that was, uh, that was a nice, uh, nice event. Uh, even with the COVID, we were still accomplishing it. And hopefully next year we can have the public back involved in the actual wrapping 
uh, they be uh, an assistance to Santa as well. Uh, that's that's all I have. Uh, Chief, on the discussion, uh, it's uh, the uh, the state, the DEP, that camera uh, system. Do you want to uh, talk about that now while you're up the bat, or, or? Yeah, I'll talk about it now. And that time when you, you when you comes to the discussion part, if you want to chime in, I spoke to QSTAR, which is the manufacturer of the um, of the camera system or the camera that DEP uses. And fortunately enough, I spoke with the, the person from QSTAR who actually is the rep that's involved with the DE program, meaning he's the one that will come out and train uh, the uh, municipality, whatever two persons they select. Um, and he, he's the one that briefs those two individuals on how the camera system works and its capabilities and so forth. So we had a, a discussion and he was very receptive. He um, you know, asked me for, I try to explain the area to him and what we're trying to accomplish. So he asked for some um, Google map, um, Google Earth shots. I sent him some Google Earth shots. I actually went to the site, took some pictures of the area from the water's perspective. So he had a good feel of what we're trying to accomplish in the area that we're trying to accomplish it in. And uh, after his review, he, he just uh, kind of indicated that it may not be the most perfect application of the product that DEP wants. Their product actually has a um, deterrent system built in, but he was explaining to me the DEP program is more for actual identification, apprehension, and then prosecution. And he said, typically the cameras are used to catch vehicle plates and then the individuals are identified that way. So he did have some concern about the distance and how to identify the people looking at DE's, DEP's perspective, questions that they might come back at us and, and say, well, what's your plan or how you're gonna be able to identify these people coming from the water and how you're gonna be able to track them down. Whereas opposed, he said, typically, I'll give you an example, say uh, the Want Park, you know how you have the gate there right before the park, uh, right after that parking lot, you, you know, in a perfect world, that camera would go there right before the gate, capture any vehicles going in and out. That's that's what he kind of explained. Uh, but like I said, there, you know, he said there are some clients that use the, the deterrent system where it's actually a strobe that goes off when there's motion detected. And there's also a, a audio warning that they're in an area they're not supposed to be. They're in an unauthorized area. But he said the DEP generally doesn't focus utilizing that capability of the camera. Um, the um, so I, I didn't come offhand thinking of any alternative location in town. Um, you know, he he wasn't saying one way or another. He was just saying some of the challenges DEP may look at mm -hmm. in our application, giving you know the number one area that you know we're we're trying to address uh, right away. Do you think it's uh from your perspective and what you've heard, heard that, that it's useful to us or, and would would like a uh, off the shelf game camera be useful just to you know take pictures whether we can get i don't know i don't know what would be helpful as far as a remote sensing uh, device like that yeah i mean i i do i think it's a overkill like you said i think a maybe a game camera would probably be the same result where yeah. we would try to identify people. Okay. Um, the, the deterrent part would be nice. So maybe that's maybe something like we can look into. And they said the only downfall about the deterrent part in the area that we would put it in is that it's so remote that it would give people time to climb a tree and or break out the chainsaw and just cut it down. So that's, you know, that's the, said, that's the downfall. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we can start looking into some type of motion device which is not too expensive that some type of uh, warning comes out or a strobe light just to catch their, okay. catch their attention. A siren, a siren would be great. <laughs> a siren would go off. Yeah. Prepare them. <laughs> Unless, you know, how sensitive it is and then boats going by. That, that was the other thing he said that, uh, you know, we would have to get the the uh, the zone of activation, motion activation down to pretty good because he said the boats on the river going by would set it off 
and it'd be constantly going off yeah. in terms of video. And um, uh, so that's, that's my report. And I'm glad I spoke with them. I have a better idea how the system works. The, um, the, the part where you have to focus in the zone for the uh, motion detection actually has to be done up where the camera is. There's no um, remote viewing of the camera. The, um, it's only, you can download the video, which was, you know, I guess captured on the hard drive, but there's no remote viewing where you look at a, a device and you can see what the camera sees. Um, okay. It's you go out with a device, you download it by, via Wi-Fi and, and then you get the video and you go back and review it. All right. Well, we gave it a try and thanks for we're really digging into that. Uh, to getting into the, the tech part of it that uh, mayor, mayor. Uh, i think i missed something even the last time where where are you considering putting this uh piece of equipment i think out in out in this lot one that we just uh authorized that okay. you know something that, that it seemed like from the the initial description on the dep uh, website and the uh, the literature I received, uh, it seemed like this might be something that could be useful to get photographic. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, hunter, hunters are using cameras without electricity on battery. I mean, there has to be something out there because they're, they're poaching through cameras. Um, same thing we want to do. We want to poach the yeah. litters. Well, as the, as the chief described, this, the system that the DEP has is more suited to be mounted like on a building or a hard structure to, you know, people that are coming in with pickup trucks or, or, or flatbeds and dumping off, you know, trash and litter, but you know, it's, right. it's, it's catching people okay. in a narrow, uh, you know, in a driveway or a roadway or a dead end that, uh, uh, where this is a problem. Um, it just seemed that uh, since this was a self-contained unit and, it is where it is. It might be useful for our application, but it, uh, as the chief has gone through, it doesn't seem uh, maybe the best fit and maybe something like you mentioned, a game camera from uh, Cabela's or something like that as a starting point uh, might be useful. Yeah, we, we can uh, try that type of camera and see what kind of quality we get, what kind of, you know, actually, if it's a repetitive uh, group, may eventually be able to get uh, some video that could identify someone. Lost my sound over here. Excuse me? Uh, hey, Phil, can you meet, go on mute? You're, there's some background noise coming through. But uh, like I said, we, we, uh, we'll, we'll take a, a look and, and try one of those cameras and see what kind of luck we have with it. All right. So we won't pursue this any farther, correct? For this? My, you know, unless you have an alternative alternative location i would say i don't think it's going to work after speaking with him uh, okay and dep uh, might you know also you know you might be wasting your time because dep wants some kind of area that you can funnel like you said traffic into and you can capture them yeah like fish uh, in a barrel no great work for really really getting into the the technical requirements of that I appreciate it anything else chief yeah, that's all for tonight. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thanks for the good work during the snowstorm. Thank you. Uh, Township Committee, Ms. Fitzpatrick, you want to lead off? Sure. Um, I attended the History Board uh, Zoom meeting, and uh, the History Board is working on several projects. Uh, they're replacing the veterans display at Town Hall with um, businesses in town. Uh, I believe Jay Cohen is going to um, spearhead that and he actually may have done that already I haven't been in the lobby to see if he's done that um, they're working on signage for several historic sites in town um, they're adding some homes uh, to the walking tour uh, also doing signage for the liberty trees and trying to work to replace the trees that have either been cut down or died um, in, and I got an email recently that they would like to do a scan of the property at 414 Rancocas Avenue to see if there are any artifacts there. 
Uh, so I did ask them to send either an email or letter to Janice and CC us with, they do have, uh, Peter has someone that does that, but I, I thought we, we may need to get three quotes before we would even um, decide whether or not we would do that. So I did tell them to put that in writing to the to Janice and the township committee. What's that for again? It's to scan the property at 414 Rancocas Avenue for any artifacts. Um, a professional thing or is this are, like uh, just metal detectors, amateurs? Because uh, Mr. Cohen next door has had uh, some, you know, people come out to his property and uh, talk with them and so forth. Uh, and they're just amateurs and whatever they find, they, they give to the property owner. Um, I, I think it's a little more involved. Okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure, but I asked them to put it in writing to us because there are some professionals that do that. Um, I don't think it's just somebody with a um, metal detector. I could be wrong. Um, I don't know if John, if the chairman's online, but maybe he can bring that up at the next public session if he is online. Um, I attended a recreation meeting. I uh, also helped with the gingerbread houses, uh, distributing them. We purchased a hundred and gave all but um, five out. Um, Rec approved the conceptual plan uh, prepared by Scott Taylor for the park at 414 Grand Cocos Avenue. Um, they also approved the um, contract format to go out to bid for the Field of Dreams landscaping for the new, uh, the new term. Uh, I rode around Saturday night to the houses in town for the best decorated house contest. We have 15 on the list, but oh my gosh, there's so many homes in Delanco that are lit up. It's incredible. Uh, I could only do half because my eyes were getting tired. Uh, I wish I could have somebody drive me, but with this pandemic the way it is, I, I uh, we're all doing it on our own or, you know, if you have a mate. So let's see. Um, the seniors had a Zoom meeting, the first one since the pandemic. There were 12 people that joined the meeting and it was really nice chatting with everyone uh, and to uh, hear what they've been doing during this time. And they hope to do another one in January. Uh, Santa around town was here Saturday. I'm sure everybody um, enjoyed it. Uh, it was really kind of nice because it gives us an opportunity to see the EMT and all the volunteers that actually lead Santa or driving other uh, vehicles through town. I think it gives the town an opportunity to see their faces. It, it, it was really nice. And um, Gateway Park, uh, the gazebo was pretty dirty and I couldn't really uh, power wash at this time of year, but I did take my blower down there and clean it out. Replant, I, I fixed the window boxes for the Christmas season and I had to get two more sets of lights. So I just got them in the mail today. So I'll be putting the other lights up uh, around the gazebo. So you'll see that lit up tomorrow night. And I did want to mention that the Delanco Women's Club, as the Cops Care and the EMT program, we did um, also take care of two families for Christmas. Um, we got a list for the entire family, and we have taken care of two families in town. So it's really nice that we have organizations in town that do that during this time of year. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for uh, your stewardship of Gateway Park there in the gazebo cave. I've been doing that for a number of years, and it is a labor of love. I can tell you that. Well done. Thank you. Hey, always look hey and, and, and Mayor, there is a uh, comment in the chat section um, from Alyssa, who's, I believe, also on the historical board. History yes, board. she is. Yeah. On the history board. <laughs> history board. <Hey>. Thank God. <laughs> I want that hat. <laughs> Yeah. Her, her, her comment? She, I, I don't know if I can see it. Sometimes it comes up. Hi, this is Alyssa talking. Um, I said that we were interested in scanning the property with metal detectors, so amateur scanning. And I talked. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, that's not what, that's not the way I got it from, um, I just lost everybody. I hear you, Kate. Yeah, I just lost my picture somehow. Yes. Wait, yeah. All right, for that clarification. Appreciate it. Uh, anything else, Kate? No, that's it. All right, thank you so much. Uh, let's see, Mr. Allette. I have no report this evening, thank you. I'm back. I'm back, Janice. See ya. Gotcha. <laughs> Mr. Brown, can we take you away from your uh, your metal shop there? I think we lost him. Let's Mr. See. Brown didn't have audio. He had put on his. I don't paper. see him at all, though. Here, he's coming back. Hold on one second, everybody. All right. There, he's uh, he's connecting back in. There he is. Hi, John. Welcome back. Do you have anything for uh, your, your committee member report? No, I have nothing this month. All right. Thank you. And Ms. Holland. Um, I have nothing. I just did want to say thank you to the uh, to the road crew. I, I mean, I, I came home from work Wednesday night at nine o'clock and uh, Nothing had been plowed yet. I guess waiting on the three inches or so to accumulate. And I left the, I walked the dog at 4.30 in the morning, Thursday and 5 a.m. Roads were so clear in Delanco. It was smooth sailing right up until I hit the Beverly line. And then it was like a foot of snow under my tires. So wild, but uh, but definitely made me appreciate uh, John Fenimore and his crew. I, I sent him a message and responded with how many, uh, how many tons of salt they'd already put down. So, I mean, they, they were sleepless that night, I'm sure. So that's all I have. Okay. Um, as this is the last meeting of the year, um, it's been a heck of a year. And uh, I, uh, my bag of thank yous is not big enough, but uh, to the township uh, staff, uh, administration and public works and the police, uh, the volunteers and all the boards and committees. Uh, this has been an extraordinary year and everyone, everyone has just, uh, uh, there's never just outstanding effort and going above and beyond uh, to make things work and keep it running and keep the lights on in this town. And uh, um, it's, it's just uh, an extraordinary, um, effort by everyone, uh, volunteers, the staff, everything. Like I said, my, my bag of thank yous isn't big enough. So, um, and uh, we've been safe and, uh, you know, we've, we've had some uh, uh, COVID quarantines uh, that continue to, to hit the, our, our personnel and, but uh, so far so good and we've been fortunate. So um, let's, let's continue and, uh, and move into the new year. Uh, we're going to be in these conditions for a while. Uh, we'll press on and support each other and look out for each other. So thank you. Um, thank you so much. All right. Uh, consent agenda items. Uh, consent agenda items are going to continue to be routine and will be enacted with a single motion. Any item requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All consent agenda items will be reflected in full in the minutes. Is there any item on the consent agenda that the uh, committee member would like to see removed or any questions at this point? Hearing no questions or comments, here we go. Resolution 2020-141, resolution of the committee of the Township of Delanco County of Burlington, New Jersey, authorizing the appointment of police sergeant. Resolution-142, resolution authorizing the Township of Delanco through the Township of Delanco Police Department to participate in the Defense Logistics Agency Law Enforcement Support Office 1033 program to enable the Township of Delanco Police Department to request and acquire excess Department of Defense equipment. Resolution-143, authorizing the Township of Delanco to enter into a cooperative pricing agreement for 2021-2025. Is that correct, four years? Yes. Okay, thank you. Resolution 144, resolution authorizing the contract with the Burlington County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund Retrospective Program. Uh, resolution 1-145, resolution authorizing the 2020 budget appropriation transfers. Uh, resolution uh, 
Dash 146, uh, resolution authorizing the execution of a share, shared services agreement with the Township of Willingboro for the provision of, of animal control service, animal control services, getting cotton mouth here. Resolution dash 147, resolution to cancel taxes due to total veteran exemption pursuant to NJSA 54 colon 4-3.30A. Payment of bills uh, um, to be determined. This is the correct agenda, right? The latest one? Yes, with, with, the, with, the, bill, on with the, the bill amounts inserted. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Account current fund amount $21,692.51. Payroll $136,302.33. Capital fund $3,797.00. Escrow trust $2,571.00. Municipal open space fund $21,185.93. Approval of minutes December 7th, 2021. Approval of department reports as submitted. May approval of the consent agenda. Motion by. So moved. Motion by Ms. Fitzpatrick. A second, please. Second. Second by Mr. Olette. Roll call, please. Mr. Brown. Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick. Yes. Ms. Holland. Yes. Mr. Olette. Yes. Mr. Templeton. Yes. Uh, meetings now open to the public for comments and questions. Session two. This is uh, via live audio or type chat Zoom function. Please unmute your microphone for audio comment questions. State your name and address, please. Meeting is now open to the public. Anything coming in, Mrs. Lohr? No, I don't see any chats coming in. Um, anyone from the public wishing to speak should unmute and uh, Introduce yourself. All right, seeing, seeing or hearing no questions or comments from the public, session two is now closed. Uh, correspondence, please. I have no additional correspondence. All right. All right, status of coronavirus disease, uh, COVID-19, community impact update. Um, we're still here. We're, uh, uh, things are hopeful. Uh, the vaccine's coming slowly, uh, and it, it is real, and it is uh, out there. Uh, I know for a fact, I uh, had a relative who's a respiratory nurse in the Philadelphia hospital. She got her uh, vaccine yesterday, uh, the stage one. So it, it is out there, but uh, as, as I heard, uh, it very dis descriptively explained or described uh, uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but we still have a long tunnel to go through yet. So uh, we're going to have to bear down and uh, get through the next couple of months until we get to a point where um, we may be able to get back to some degree of normalcy. So um, our holiday plans, you know, as, as we've been hearing up and down through the media, uh, this is going to be a very different season. Uh, minimize the contacts. Uh, uh, as difficult as that is, uh, and it's basically protect yourselves, your family, uh, your loved ones as much as you want to get together. Um, but we all want to be here next year to have uh, the holidays like we would normally celebrate. So uh, minimize the contacts. Uh, the, the first time that I can remember is uh, just staying home. Normally we put 200 miles on the car on a two-day period and visit a bunch of people, but uh, this year, no. So uh, please be careful this season and uh, uh, make it through for next year. Uh, Mrs. Laura, executive orders update, COVID policy procedures. I don't think anything new has come down. No, the CDC has uh, slightly changed its um, quarantine um, time frame. Uh, so, but our policy just reflects that we follow CDC guidelines. There is one issue in executive session I just want to brief committee on um, regard, regarding our COVID policy, um, uh, but that is, that is it for now. Yeah. Um, I did want to mention uh, uh, in the last 30 days, we've had uh, 56 additional positives in Delanco. And in the last 30 days, uh, We've lost three of our uh, Lanco friends and neighbors uh, through um, due to COVID. 
So uh, it's 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 on our doorstep. So please be careful. Uh, status of township committee meetings for January fourth. Uh, as far as the reorg, uh, I think Mrs. Laura put out uh, an inquiry as far as the reorg for either six thirty or seven o'clock start. Let's just uh, let's just whether you're going to continue doing COVID Zoom. This is for COVID. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, not, not the rest of it. This is, this is just to confirm um, that the, the reorg for January 1st and the regular meeting will continue on Zoom platform. And that's what it'll be. Thank you. Any other questions regarding uh, COVID before we move on? Discussion items? All right, um, discussion item, item number one, uh, Delanco Environmental Advisory Board pollinator signage for the basins. Uh, I think Ms. Perlmutter is, is out there. Um, yes, I'm here. Yes. Uh, can you tell us where you are on, uh, on uh, the signs that you're, you were proposing for? Uh, for New England or for all of them? Uh, briefly, all of them. Okay, we want to put um, some pollinator educational signs out there um, at Newton's Landing Basins and then at Vine Street where we have done some pollinator plantings as well as West Ave and then 414 Rancocas Ave where we will do some future plantings. Um, I'm sure you've all seen these types of signs before whether at county or state parks or even small municipality park. It's, it's kind of just an educational sign showing you what's there, um, why it's there, the species that it benefits, why it's important, um, all of the environmental benefits that it provides. How big's the sign? Uh, for Newton's Landing, we want to put one that is, I believe, 24 inches wide by 18 inches high. And then for Vine Street, West Ave and 414, I believe they will be a little bit smaller at 18 by 12 inches. And these are kind of modeled off of what the, uh, the what's in the county park system, correct? Yes, and we will most likely be using the same company that they have used in the past. Okay. Um, do you have any questions, Mr. Schwab or? or uh... I just want to make sure she did send me uh the uh, cost information, and it's a process issue. They have a $1,300 uh, grant, and there's some unused funds from this year, but it's only a couple hundred dollars, and it's cheaper to buy all at once. And so the question will be, uh, if Amber agrees also, that when you meet with them on February 8th, perhaps the whole program ought to be looked at because there might not be enough funds uh, from the grant or the amount that normally you budget. So there may be some extra money. So that the issue of, they're a lot cheaper. She points out if we order them all at once then order one at a time. And therefore we probably need to have, take a look at the whole thing. Last time this was brought up, the issue of what signs would look like, what they would say, uh, their size, those questions and whether or not, if you're satisfied with that as the end product, then it's only a budget issue uh, for your February 8th meeting. And Amber and EAB can work on that and you can finalize this uh, at your meeting then, if that makes sense. Anybody on the committee have any questions uh, regarding that process or from uh, your questions for uh, Ms. Promoter? No, I think it's a good educational tool to have out there for people to see what we're doing and why we're doing it. Good job, Amber. Thank you. Props to the rest of the EAB as well. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, All right. So, does Amber, it makes sense. Then we'll we'll wait to the February eighth meeting, and they'll make a budget decision, and then you can make a determination on ordering at that point. We can carry over the yeah. two hundred dollars. So that's a near, that's a minor thing. You can't put money down on it out of this budget to reserve it, but we'll just make sure that the it's understood that there was an underspent in one year and generally uh, they'll allocate that extra in the next year. Sure, and um, 
February 8th. Uh, that'll give us some time. We will be putting together the actual design great, um, great. and we'll be sending that in as well. So then you can review that as well if you'd like. Great, that'll be, it'll be part of your budget discussion that night. Great, and thank quote, you. And, and the quote uh, they got or she got on the signs, uh, it's uh, for 90, good for 90 days. So we're, we're still inside of that uh, to make a decision. All right, hey, I think we're good on that. Thank okay, you. good. Process, process is what's important. I don't want to hold anybody up, but it's more money than the grant covers. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, let me jump ahead here on the discussion items. Burlington County Route 130 quarter questionnaire. Um, as this was kind of dropped on us uh, the beginning of the month, and uh, uh, there was some back and forth at our previous meeting. I had sent an inquiry to uh, Tom Stangy and Kindness down at the Bridge Commission, uh, apparently the only one left in that office, uh, to try to shepherd this through from the 12 communities. Uh, but I had kind of cobbled together something uh, to answer the questionnaire, the two page questionnaire that's due actually tomorrow, uh, initially. And uh, forward to that to Richard and Janice and uh, Miss, Miss, Mrs. Martin. To look at, and I also sent it down to uh, Mr. Stanley Kindness at the Bridge Commission. You know, to ask if is is this on the right track? Is this is what they're looking for? Fortunately, we have a, a fairly fresh reexamination report of the master plan that came out last spring, and so I just lifted uh, uh, some good copy from that uh, as it's uh, very current. And uh, uh, anyway, the reply I got from uh, Mr. Stanley Kindness was, you know. This this is this is good, and uh, you know, polish up and and fill it out with uh, some comments that Mrs. Lore uh, filled in and Mrs. Martin uh, also added to. So uh, I guess the question is, uh, do we want to kind of do this in house uh, and pull together from different departments, or do we want to turn this over to uh, our professional planners and uh, uh, let them uh, complete it? or uh, what's the feeling of the committee and what's the direction you want to go? Um, you know, my, there was one item I wanted to add if this is the appropriate venue to add it. And that is, um, I had talked to the state some time ago about reimbursing municipalities for the 100% tax um, rebate that we give to disabled veterans. It's a state mandate, um, but it's an unfunded mandate. And I wonder if we should either do that. I don't know if this is the form to do it in or if we should apply to the state. Um, every time a veteran is, uh, does qualify as a disabled veteran, they have 100%, um, um, they don't pay any real estate taxes. And if they paid any for the year, they get refunded. And I think it's a wonderful program for veterans. However, the state doesn't reimburse us for that. Uh, our municipality may not have the same amount of veterans as someone like Willingboro or Pemberton. Uh, I attended a conference one time with Steve Sweeney and we brought that up and it was sort of just overlooked. But um, I think it's becoming more of a problem and it, I don't know if this is the venue to address it, but we should address it somewhere along the line. Okay. Um, talking, talking with Richard today, I guess, you know, the question for us tonight is, uh, do we want to turn this over to uh, uh, the tower, uh, tower design to, to finish it or do, you know, uh, between the planning board circulated there uh, and Mrs. Laura and Mr. Schwab and the committee members input and uh, basically crafted on our own. I mean, is that uh, the committee feel uh, that's the way to go or do you want to contract this out? All right, and this is this is a, a physical planning tool. So <laughs> Kate, probably that would not be appropriate in this venue. Uh, okay. The key thing is that you should each, if you read what Mike drafted, if everyone's comfortable and says, that describes my town, that's how I want the county and the state agencies to see us, 
then we don't need someone else to write anything. If you look at it and say, this does not make any sense, it's not, doesn't represent my vision, then it's a whole other story. So if everyone's comfortable pretty much with the vision as put down there with some of the uh, improvements, I think that uh, Janice and Kitty gave, then you can just proceed and not get involved with starting all over again with the planner. But if you don't think it represents you, maybe you need to get the planner and then have that discussion with her. Hi, this is Bert. And uh, as I read through this, I felt very proud. I was like, who put this together? Because this is the way I feel about the Blanco. And these are the things that I see. And uh, it didn't, again, not knowing who the folks were that worked on this, uh, thumbs up to you. you. You did a great job from what I can see. You know, and someone's got uh, a way to uh, fluff this up or make it. Uh, I, I think you fluff it up. I think that uh, you take away the heart of the message that was that I read or that I felt uh, after reading it. Uh, I would go, go beyond the folks that worked on this uh, as far as getting an outside service to uh, try and do more with this. Uh, keep it in the house. And again, uh, thank you for the folks that put this together. I, it's the way I feel about the Lanco and the way I see things here in the Lanco. There may be a couple of things that may have been missed, but overall, uh, the heart is there. Well, the yeah. majority of the text came out of the uh, re-examination report. That was that was credited, you know, in, in the document, and the other, other big pieces came from the hazard mitigation plan that Mrs. Lohr uh, worked on uh, with Harry Fox uh, and ERI about uh, three years ago. So uh, it was all—it's already stuff that's been published. Uh, like I said, the re-exam report, report uh, just came out last spring, and so it's it's fairly fresh and current. Yeah, it's a good job. I don't think we need professionals involved. Our staff did a great job. I, I would agree with that. I, I have um, two questions or comments. I guess in, in the section for equity, um, I understand and appreciate the sentiment that Delanco is only three square miles and an issue affects all of us. However, um, this being kind of targeted at pollution, traffic, all those things that are a little more um, prevalent for the Cooperstown Road people, for the people that are now finding themselves right in that warehousing district mm -hmm. and looking at the, the farm being demolished for more warehousing. I, I think that they are suffering in an, in an equity. I don't know how you present that, but that goes to my next question. What is the ultimate purpose of presenting this to Tom, where, where does it go from there? When, when we're talking or, or highlighting these trouble spots where flooding could occur, or um, I guess I, I would be concerned whether it's a, you know, a situation where if funding became available for the county or the state, whether it's, oh, we see that in Delanco's plan, they need this, so we're gonna funnel it there versus uh, yeah, they've already mentioned that this is a flood problem, and you know, if if it were a hundred year or two hundred year flood, this would just be a wash. So let's not even bother funding it. I, I just don't really understand, and, and maybe someone else can shed light where where does this information wind up, and how does it get used? Um, Christine, I think you've got it. It generally. <laughs> ends up on a shelf. Yes. <laughs> the process. All the more reason not to spend planner money to, to develop this any yeah. further. If it, right? A lot of times the, the process itself, just my couple of years in, in, in municipal government, the process itself is aimed at having the community agree this is what they're doing, which is what the master plan does. They in effect take this and match it up with all the other Route 130 municipalities in the county and see what has in common, uh, how diverse things are. But let's say everybody has in that equity section, everybody has a neighborhood where uh, due to the industry and so on, 
their in their health or environmental. They're aiming like at, for example, in the city of Camden. Mm -hmm. That's what this question is aiming at, or generally an urban city. But suppose everybody answers something on that. Somebody at the state level may open their eyes and say, maybe we ought to put that a little higher on our policy and financial priority. But from a practical standpoint, you're absolutely correct. If funding is available, the first thing they ask is, did you identify that as a problem in any of your documents? Mm -hmm. And so if you don't identify it here, don't ask for any state money to solve a problem that you discover later on. That's the practical thing. Got it, thank you. In the, uh, in the back third of the, of the agenda packet that uh, Mrs. Lohr prepared, it's got the plan endorsement process, which basically yeah, true. sets out, it, it's adding things up, it seems to be about a year to a year and a half uh, series of steps uh, with public meetings and uh, various other uh, activities. So this is just the initial part. Uh, and as uh, is uh, talking with Mr. Schwab a couple days ago on this this very question. Uh, this two-page questionnaire that, as I said, is due tomorrow that we've got an extension on, kind of a soft extension, uh, really is to create an executive summary of a whole bunch of stuff that uh, uh, Michelle Taylor and Mrs. Martin submitted to the state uh, for this planning thing for the initial steps uh, about a year ago. And uh, uh, there must be 25 or 30 documents that they pulled together and submitted. Um, and as Mr. Schwab's, you know, kind of summarized, we're basically doing the summary for someone up at the uh, state, you know, Office of Planning Advocacy to get an executive summary that's a two-page look at Delanco. So um, even though they've got all the documents, this is coming from we're basically doing the work to, to tell them the Reader's Digest version of it all, so. Right. And I, I think you have to be prepared to have a couple of you be part of that process over the next year and a half so that the end document that comes out and goes on that shelf does represent what you want it to, to say by attending the public hearings or going to the work sessions. So I know uh, Mike is the one who put this together, so clearly he's become now the expert at it, but somebody else ought to join them uh, for whenever they're gonna be calling these meetings and they're gonna want representation. And so someone needs to go with them for that. Did I just so sign up for that? Who signed up for that? Did you just sign me up for that? <laughs> I signed you up for that, that's correct. <laughs> they haven't established any meeting dates yet, have they? No, no, no. no. it'll be six to eight months before you yeah. get At to least. that point. All right, uh, so uh, everyone, uh, please uh, review uh, that draft shell. Uh, as I said, nothing's, uh, nothing's firm. Uh, please. Uh, yeah, Fern said he had a couple things he thought you'd go email Mike yeah. about it so you can pop it yeah. in there. And uh, we'll cobble it all together. Uh, Mrs. Lohr's comments, uh, uh, any of the committee members on any topics uh, that are touched on in that two page questionnaire, and we'll try to blend it together and uh, uh, circulate it and, uh, you know, we'll probably be looking at this a couple, two or three more times uh, before uh, I get a, an urgent call from Mr. Uh, Stanley Nikas uh, kind of at the Bridge Commission saying, where, where is this thing? So uh, anyway, everyone's welcome to participate in this. So, all right, that's out of the way. Um, municipal calendar, Mrs. Lord, you wanna talk about that? Well, the first thing is the um, just to confirm the reorganization is uh, meeting is January 4th, Monday, January 4th, 2021. And it looks like we're going to do start at seven. Um, if that's okay. I think seven might work out better for a couple of committee people. So is seven okay? All right. And then after the adjournment of the reorganization meeting, um, we'll go right into a um, regular business meeting uh, under the same Zoom login uh, and for uh, passcode and ID. Uh, so with that, we'll move to the annual calendar because we are required by New Jersey statute to publish a <coughs> annual calendar of um, 
meeting dates. So if you will turn to your, I include in the packet a proposed, it is a proposed calendar um, through to December of 2021. And just with special notation for June, because a primary is the first Monday after the first Tuesday, as long as the state doesn't change it, um, that would make the primary June 8th, uh, which means that um, the night before the, the room will be set up as a, a district is hopefully we'll be back to full districts and COVID will just be a, a, a bad memory. Um, and then we have the general election in November, which is Tuesday, November 2nd. So again, we would move that first meeting uh, in November to November 8th. Um, July, uh, we usually just have one meeting and being that July 4th is a Sunday, which means the township building is closed on Monday the 5th. I did propose that we do the meeting on the 12th, July 12th. And again, uh, same way with September with um, Labor Day being September 6th, it pushes the meetings back to the 13th and 27th. But you have, you know, that, that's what I propose. You also have the, uh, if you notice, she didn't mark them, the budget workshops, which is I'm concerned with, yep. normally is the fourth Monday of the month, which would be January 25th, February 22nd, and March 22nd. And the question I asked before is what time of the day all five of you can commit to, uh, to meet. We've done it at two in the afternoon. We've done it at three, 3.30, 4.30. And if necessary, of course, we've done it in the evening. Uh, so I need your reactions to that, those yeah. dates and the times. Yeah, the budget workshops, um, you see it says that they would be deterrent to be determined. Um, right. So, and... Mr. Schwab is correct for the past several years, we've done them in the afternoon. So um, they should also be published as part of the annual meeting right. notice. Um, I guess my question would be to really uh, John and Christine being there uh, working, what Thank their you. work schedules are. I work too. Oh, okay, Kate. I'm retiring, so <laughs> that'll be new to me. Who's good? Who, um, yeah, the three of you. Um, what's the most restrictive or what, what fits the best for you? Well, I would say we do what we did last year. It's the same committee going into the new year. You know, we've managed to work it out. Afternoons are okay with me, other than December, but uh, in the spring, I can do the afternoon thing. Oh, let me do that. No. But January and February and March is not the spring. Is that okay though, John? Yeah, it's close enough. Yeah. As long <laughs> as it's not as long as it's not Christmas. <laughs> All right. And and they may be via okay. Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, we're Probably. Probably. yeah. Yeah, we'll be hey, Zoom. Hey, what's your schedules on Monday afternoons? I, I can do 3:30. Okay. Any of those days. Okay, so that works. Chris? That works for me. Yeah, um my schedule's a little um, crazy only because it's dictated by salt season. Um, so any storm leaves me in the office till Lord knows when. Um, but if it's Zoom, then it doesn't much matter, right? So I'll okay. make whatever work, but um, but probably the, the later the better, so 3.30 or thereafter. Right, or, okay. Well, we can always make it after, we just can't make it sooner. So if some reason we've got to move it to four, they, it's not the end of the world. We've advertised 3.30, we just start right. late. Um, so, all right, so we'll do uh, January 25th, February 22nd, March 22nd at 3.30 for, this, for schedule purposes. And I'll get all the information in advance because you'll have that uh, with you while we're Zooming. All right. Okay. So, Richard. What about the rest of the schedule? Just the three, 125, yeah. 222, and 322? Correct. Okay. You're ready. Well done. Everything else okay? All the other dates? Yeah. Um, yeah. So a meeting was April 5th. So that that's 
the Monday after Easter. Not that I anticipate the world is going to open back up immediately for COVID, but any chance that we can squish that down to the 12th and do meetings 12th and the 19th, just in case there's travel? Maybe. Any, any conflict there? Moving it to the 12th? I'm good. You're okay? Yes, yeah. you see any reason? I don't see any reason. It's Township Committee's call. I don't see any conflicts um, as far as other, you know, other uh, okay. events. Okay, yeah, we will because March has the five Mondays. We have a meeting March fifteenth, so there's one, two, three, so be four weeks in between. But yeah. other than that, I guess it's not a big deal. I mean, I'm, I'll be all right on the fifth. Entirely up to the committee, whatever you want. John, do you have a, any thought, Fern? I'm okay with either. No, you, you call it, I'll make it happen. All right. Yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's do the 12th. Okay. April 12th instead of the 5th. So 12th and 19th for April. Any other uh, dates? The slip slide. Okay, we good, Mrs. Lord? Yeah, I, after we adjourn tonight's meeting, after the executive session, um, I, I will be setting up the January 4th. I have to get that to the newspaper tonight. Yeah. So you'll, you'll be getting an email with those Zoom login credentials later this evening for the, the January 4th meetings. All right. All right, um, let's skip down to uh, the, uh, so we're okay on the calendar. Um, defense regulations, continued discussion and uh, the planning board recommendations. Um, this thing we've been kicking around for too long. Yeah, I, I may I have a little bit of comment. I was uh, gonna work with, uh, uh, Janice and Jeff and with Michelle if necessary and Doug to last time you implemented the I you talked about just make the six foot to the front building line and the next day uh, Jeff walked in and said he had an application <laughs> from somebody who had a has a house that has a forget not a garage but just a front is six foot there's a section of the front the six foot in advance of the main house and a section of the back that's six foot it's like a Z kind of thing. And so the question is, what is the front building line and where we want to go with that? Uh, because we could exempt, we're talking about don't count garages for the front building line, but if it's not a garage and you have a, a house that has that configuration, you know, where do you want it to go six foot? Where do you want it to end? It may be that there's a lot more implications to all this stuff than, than as we were hoping. One possibility would be to lay out, uh, you know, a half a dozen uh, Example. rectangles or different things and show different things. Or the only thing I could think of was where we should say uh, the point of the structure closest to the fence. That may be where you want to go. So if uh, you have a house that has a bit of a snout coming forward, that six foot can go to there in the back. Doesn't, where it was closest, that's the point, the rear line, the back line. Maybe we need to show you a bunch of options so that you're going to have to decide what you want and then send it to the Joint Land Use Board for their review and comment. So I don't know how you want to do this procedurally, how you want to handle this, the five of you. I thought at the last meeting that you were going to talk to Jeff or, or Jeff was going to talk to the property owner at 327 Vine to see if he would agree to put a four foot fence across um, that you would see from the street and then continue with the six foot along the side and in the back. I thought that was what we decided at that meeting. So that um, that would take. That's for that particular property. I'm just thinking of. Well, I, but I wonder was order. that done because this man sent his thing back in July 
was that was did anyone deal with that issue with him i will have to talk to jeff no i did not talk to jeff about it i will okay because that that's relevant because if he can do a four foot then he's off the list we don't have to worry about him because that to me would make sense for him uh okay. as far as doing all this other i mean I mean, we would have to sit down. We would have to have a subcommittee to review all this with photos and, I mean, measurements. And it's not something you can just see off the top of your head. I mean, you have to, um, I don't know. I don't know why we want to change our current ordinances if we, if there's a solution for people who are requesting them, um, if there's another solution that would fall within the ordinances. Because <coughs> it's you know, potentially just, overly, overly restrictive. Right. right, but there are some properties in town, if you ride around town where the fence, a six foot fence is on a corner property where their front yard faces the street and the whole the whole side yard which is considered the front yard or it's there's a fence all the way down the street it's like there's a couple I could point out but um I think that we would need a subcommittee to sit down and have diagrams or photos of properties in order for us to revamp this to make it Thank you, right. um suitable. I don't think it's something that we can continue to discuss in these Zoom meetings over and over and over again. But I think if we can give property owners a suggestion so that they don't have to get a variance, like this particular fellow, I think if he goes with a forefoot in that one area, he can, he can do it without going for a variance. But I agree that people should not have to go before the Joint Land Use Board for a variance for certain items in town, this being one of them. And, but we need to come up with a better plan. We need a few people to get together, go around town, take some pictures, sit down and work it up. That's my suggestion. Talking about it at this meeting, these meetings yeah. are worthless. No, no, it hasn't. Um, Hey, I think you're correct in what you're saying about this one resident over on Vine. Uh, and maybe I've become confused in between reading the ordinance and then uh, the changes to the ordinance where right now he has a solid six foot fence uh, for that property. Uh, and we're suggesting that he drop that down to four. But in somewhere in there, in my reading, uh, he would not be able he still cannot put up a solid fence uh for that portion it needs to be 50 percent where you can see through it so it's like uh the pickets would be every other picket so it doesn't create that privacy that i guess he's looking for and again uh no i don't read the ordinance that way so i'm mis um i'm misreading or misinterpreting it uh, I may be also, uh, again. I thought that the open picket fence is only on the waterfront properties. Uh, I didn't know that had anything to do with the front, with it, with putting it back. I, that's the only ordinance I remember with having an open picket fence was waterfront properties. And the purpose of that was so that in a flood, the water can flow freely. That is required That's for uh, if you're it's in the front yard. Yeah, the front. You have to have a see-through fence, four foot high see-through, mm -hmm. if it's in the front yard. Right. We're trying to avoid this being in the front yard for this it's guy. Back. It's not in, not in the front not yard. Front so hopefully yard. it's not required for that one. This is not in his front yard. No. This sets back because if it were in his front yard, he wouldn't have a driveway. Right. This sets back quite a bit. It's not his front yard. Right. He's at 24 feet, and I think he needed to be at 25 feet. No. Yeah, really. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, it's not. It, it, 
to me, it, it makes sense to prove it if he does four foot and then the six foot along the side in the back. Well, the, 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 the couple ordinances that were in last, uh, the previous meetings uh, from the other, some surrounding towns, they had, I think a six foot fence was allowed out of the front building line. Um, right. Just regarding what Mr. Schwab had mentioned as far as defining the front building line. Um, but in this situation on Vine Street, you know, as Mr. Brown had pointed out a meeting or so ago, um, the subject uh, property's side yard is the adjacent property's backyard. And right. so that individual uh, would be able to put a right. six foot high fence unrestricted um, and uh, kind of a, a quirk in, 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 in the geography there as who's, who's allowed to do what with the same, uh, at the same location, essentially. Um, as a general point, was the committee okay with a six foot fence to the front building line, wherever that definition, wherever that defined point is? Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, where it, that's where it becomes a problem. That's where it becomes a problem on some properties because if the property is on the corner and the house faces one street. That whole, that, and they put it on the property line because we have some in town like that. It almost looks like a barracks along there. Um, that's why I think it, you can't, it's not a general thing that you can just say. I think we have to be a little more specific, but specific enough that people can replace their fences to enhance their property, that they don't have to get a variance. Well, we, we, corner lots are already treated differently in our in our ordinance. So doesn't that already resolve that problem? If you're looking at a corner lot, you're already limited to four feet. So it doesn't affect this six foot to the property line. And, and how do those other towns, all those ordinances that we read, I, mean, I, I don't think that by loosening this restriction, it's going to have, you know, I, I know Doug mentioned the, the look that it could, that could spread across the town if everybody had six foot fences along Burlington Avenue. I just don't think that that's a, a, a reasonable concern. I don't think there's going to be a mad dash for everyone to put up fencing. Yeah. I just think... Yeah. This is one area, as evidenced by that work in the, the subject lots issue, like there just might not be a logic to regulating it like that because it's permitted by one lot and not by the other. So it well, just it, perhaps uh, doesn't need regulation. Is this something, uh, how, do, how do we vote uh, on this as far as getting, uh, if, if we want to, have a couple of uh, example uh, footprints of various houses with garages or living rooms that project forward of, of what is usually defined as the front building line. Do we want um, uh, our, our zoning officer to, to see if he can find something or sure. the administration to find something or task uh, uh, the Taylor group to give us a slim down version. Hey, th these are some, some guidelines uh, for the, these different situations. Um, you know, as, as Kate says, we can't keep thrashing this out in this type of format uh, forever. I mean, it's been six months. So the subcommittee methodology generally gets to a conclusion a lot quicker. You have a couple people and working with the zoning officer and, and, uh, with someone like Janice who knows the stuff as the initial way of doing it, probably you spend an hour together looking at that, you'll come up with something better than what you guys can all talk about there. here. So I think that makes sense. Okay, who wants who wants to be the fence, uh, fence person? I'll be on I'll that be on Great. Chris and Kate, all right. All right, and uh, sort it out between the two of you and whoever you need to meet with uh, or talk with, uh, Janice or Richard or uh, Jeff. Or, uh, yeah. Jeff, and uh, see what, uh, what good things you can come up with to get us out of this uh, knot.
And Thank Richard, you. you're going to talk to Jeff about seeing if this fellow can put up a four foot fence in that one area. Yeah, for him. I will. I'll see him tomorrow. Okay, good. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's see. Last, uh, I think we're on the last discussion item 200 ash. Um, do we want to uh, have an ad hoc committee of uh, various uh, uh, community groups or the public or committee members or just keep it within the township committee to on our own um, try to re uh, go through a thought process on uh, a use for the building uh, so we can make an informed decision on, on what, which way to go. Um, what does the committee feel um, you want to do on this? Well, I'll speak first. Okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't really think we should uh, get an ad hoc committee. I think the position of this committee, we are the ones elected to make these decisions. And I think we all know where this is heading. Uh, I don't think we can really afford this building to keep it up. And uh, it would be a money pit for this town. Mm -hmm. And I think for the return that it would give, such as a rec center, a meeting hall, a, you know, a library, it's cheaper to build new. Um, so I think we need to move forward on demolition. That's my opinion. I agree. Thanks, John. I agree. I agree too, because we've already, we don't need a subcommittee. We already know what some people in town would like to see. And um, there's nothing that we can do to preserve this building to make it feasible for any of those things. It would just be, uh, it would just be too costly. Mm -hmm. So to have a subcommittee, we already know what people want there. So um, we need to do what's best for the town uh, and, and for our funding. And we have set aside the if we are in a position to partner with somebody to build something new, that would be when we would bring in a subcommittee to see what we should really put there, but not now. That's how I feel. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I have to agree that you know, to spend uh, millions of dollars on this build, building and trying to refresh it, you know, just looking at putting in elevators and trying to, uh, you know, new windows and uh, dealing with uh, possible flooding. I, I believe that, in my opinion, that we're better off uh, demolishing the building, having an open ground, and then at some, for me, going the route of uh, the Park Avenue uh, would be the way to go if we could partnership with the county uh, because of the park system or with the folks that uh, have anything to do with uh, the Rancocas uh, waterway to go that route. But uh, if others would look to put uh, some type of different building on there for the community, you know, that could be explored also. Chris? I have nothing to add. I'm, I'm happy to hear that the other committee members agree that a, a subcommittee just doesn't get us anywhere. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll meet, we'll talk. We won't come to a conclusion that's any different than what we do sitting here. So. Do you think as a, as a means of, of really explaining our position that uh, we should have uh, at, at one of our January meetings, uh, a, uh, a, a formal discussion, a public hearing on what the committee's decision is, or at least the, the, the direction we're, we're heading towards to explain uh, where we are. Uh, I, I, I see uh, the, the possibility that if we, um, as, as we're, we're on a, on a path uh, heading to authorize, you know, uh, going out to bids for demolition, that the, the public has not, uh, uh, that it will be a surprise. Uh, to, to the general public of uh, having that building come down, even though with what we know, that's probably a, a, a uh, uh, the expected result. Um, 
And I just, uh, I think it would be uh, in our best interest as, as the governing body to give the public, uh, to explain to the public, uh, this, this is, you know, what we've got. This is uh, some of the, the, the constraints we're dealing with, uh, the location, uh, the flood zone, the building, uh, and, uh, uh, and just uh, to put out our position and not do something that is seen as uh, um, not as open as, as we probably in hindsight would like it to be. Um, is that done by resolution or by ordinance? Don't we have to have an ordinance to, um, I know we budgeted for the money, but. Yeah, no, you don't need an ordinance to schedule a public information, a public hearing. No, I, I mean, mean, public hearing usually goes with an ordinance. To we, you, you, already, you didn't know. To demolish the building, do we need a resolution? The engineer, it's no different than doing a road construction. Oh, okay, so there's no, uh, okay. Yeah. But, um, but you can internally decide, as Mike said, to schedule at your second meeting in January that at the beginning of the meeting, you're going to have a, a public presentation public discussion and ask for public, public input. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. I agree that uh, because of the transparency uh, with what we're dealing with uh, is, is important. So to do the first or second meeting in January would make sense. Not the first, because that's the fourth. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. the, the second meeting the in January. So put it on the agenda for discussion and publish it that way. Okay. That one was your first item. Yep. All right. Yeah. Yeah, even with the, you know, the first item tonight on the acquisition of uh, the, the parcel on Hawk Island. Right. I mean, I'm on Facebook, but I had heard a lot of really, truly outrageous things being said on, apparently, on some of the Facebook networks in town as the, you know, what we were going to do with it and all, you know, all these horrible things and you know, where this stuff comes from. Yeah. And, you know, what we're doing with, with One Hawk Island was fairly straightforward and simple. Um, and everyone knows in town about the canvas shop and there's, you know, everyone's got an opinion on it. And I just thought uh, uh, in, in, in needing to be fully transparent and open about uh, this process with this building that we really need to uh, put put it in the, in the daylight there so and explain it so all right so so mayor for the um second meeting in january you want me to i can list it as the first business item after all the preamble stuff to just say something like um discussion and public input for proposed demolition of the canvas shop structure Something like that? Sure. Okay. Is that okay with everyone? Yes. You yes. can't really call a public hearing and that we're not going to publish right. it. How about um, that way? I'll say public input. Public discussion. Public discussion. Okay. I think that's better than input. Public discussion. Okay. Yeah. okay. We may come up with another word until then. Yeah. But, uh, all right. I think that completes all the discussion items. We get it all. Uh, yep. so any loose change anyone wants to talk about before we go do a resolution for executive? All right. I need a resolution for executive session, please. Okay. 2020-148, authorizing executive session for the purpose of uh, personnel. All right. Uh, any so move or call? Call and so move. Second. And all in favor or? Uh, roll call. Roll call. Aye. It's, it's a roll call. I mean, it's a resolution. So there should be a, a, a um, individual roll call. Thank you. Mr. Brown? Yes. Ms. Fitzpatrick? Yes. Ms. Holland? Yes. Mr. Alette? Yes. Mr. Templeton? Yes. All right. Uh, And now we need our magician to yeah, put us in exec session. Yes, uh, give me one moment. I'm switching you all over. And then you'll come back and adjourn for anyone who wants to wait. Yes, for the public, uh, we are going oh, into good. a um, breakout room for a uh, closed executive session. Um, after that, exec 
back into session, the Township Committee will return to public session um, where they may or may not take formal action uh, and then adjourn the meeting in public. Thank you. Okay. Good night, everyone. Good night. Gotta leave the breakout room. Who still needs to? And there are some people waiting for us. Oh boy, persistent. Okay, do we have everybody out of executive session back into public session? I see the mayor, I see Fern, Kate, Christine, John Brown's phone died. Well, he yeah. won't be back. Yeah, he won't be back, but we still have a quorum. All the right. task committee has adjourned from executive session, is now in public session. Um, and Mayor, are, is there any uh, additional action by the governing body at this time before no, you adjourn? No, not that I'm aware of. Does anyone, uh, anybody on the committee have any questions or last comments? Uh, happy Hanukkah, <laughs> Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays. Yes, ditto. <laughs> and be safe and healthy. Yes. Take good care, everyone. Yes. Thank you, Janice. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Thank you, you, Aaron. You're welcome. Yes. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Aaron. Thank you. We adjourn. If uh, no. Richard, so, you're muted. Right. Okay. Uh, Got to make a motion and vote to adjourn. Yep. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I shall move. Second. A second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Janice, can you hang on for a sec? Yes. All right. See you guys tomorrow. Good night. Good night, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. And I think Hanukkah was early this year, right? Earlier in December. Happy Hanukkah.